hey y'all if you're new welcome to my channel if you're not new welcome back to my channel i know it's been a while but today i come bringing you some good stuff for all my beginner blingers out there that don't know where to start this video is for you today i'm going to be showing you three different types of methods to bling for my beginners now what you're going to need is some glue a rhinestone pen or pencil whatever you choose and some rhinestones depending on the method depends on the actual sizes you need um i am going to start with the scattered method the scattered method is a lot of people's favorites because it's supposed to create this bubble effect what happens is you get the biggest rhinestone you can find or most people do the ss 30s i've seen it go up to the ss 60s but i will not i would not recommend doing an ss 60 on your cup or lid or any of that but they take the biggest rhinestone and then they place it and then they fill it in with little fillers and then they go up to the next size and place it to kind of create like a water drip bubble type of fit this is not my favorite method Now, as you can see, I'm just filling them in. You will have some gaps, but the main thing to remember when blinking is your background should match or be similar to the color you're blinking. So for instance, I should not be blinging with this black, but for recording purposes, I want to show you guys these different methods. But usually, if I was to bling this color, I would either use like a gold or a champagne type color. The next method we're going to go in is called the honeycomb method. My favorite method. I love this method hands down. So I'm a bit biased when it comes to the honeycomb. But all you're doing is making your rhinestones look like a honeycomb. Think of honeycomb and then these rhinestones. So pretty much you're going to do your first row. In order for you to have the perfect honeycomb, your row, your first row, your anchor row is what I like to call it, has to be straight to the T, okay? And then you're going to place a rhinestone in between your two rhinestones on the top row or on the row above. And you're going to repeat that process all the way down the tumbler, all the way down the pen, all the way down wherever you want to bling. But your rows have to be straight. If you have a row that is slanted tilted or a rhinestone on the side of place is going to throw your whole row off as you get to bling in the whole thing you might not notice it as much but you definitely will notice once you're a couple of rows in if you're starting to have slants if you can fix it i would say go ahead and fix it if you can't just roll with it and just wait for that top row going forward to be dry before you move on to the second row especially if you heavy handed with that glue because that glue will slide. I don't care what kind of glue you use. Though, though it will slide those rhinestones because of the heaviness of it. Now the next one and the last one that I'm going to show you guys is called the grid method. Okay. And it just sounds just like it is. It looks like a grid. You do have gaps with grids. But if you want to take a smaller rhinestone like an SS2 or an SS6 and fill it in depending on what size you're using. Then that's what you do again you have to have a bone straight line and then what you're going to do is just take the next row of rhinestones and place it directly under the top row or the row above it that's all you're doing the whole time this right here is beautiful however i'm not a gappy person i don't like the gaps I, don't, I can't do it. Like I said, some people do the smaller stones in the middle. But I feel like if I got the work that hard, then I might as well go ahead and do the honeycomb. But that's all you're doing. These rows have to be straight. The only time you don't really have to have straight lines is when you're doing that scattered method. Which is why a lot of people choose that scattered method. Because it's easier to bling. It's no rhyme or reason. You're just placing stuff and hopefully it falls into place. So now I'm going to just go back in and fill in some of the gaps um, on these other ones so you can kind of get the full effect. Um, and just so you can see how it looks like with 
you know, two full rows. I'm also going to go back in on the scattered method and finish the scattered method. So just enjoy. Okay, and before I forget, the glue that I'm using is Crystal Glaze Glue. It's industrial grade. I will put my code in the bio. I swear by this. I swear to God. I swear by this. Um, I have a ton of them. Like, I will never run out, okay? Use code TTD if you decide to try it. I've also tried Bob Smith two-part epoxy. Um, Gorilla two-part epoxy, um, J Weld, is it JB Weld two-part epoxy? I would say though, if you aren't, if you are a beginner, I would stray away from the two-part epoxies because those usually have fast curing times, even though they may say 30, 15, 5, or whatever. Um, with crystal glaze, it dries for about three to five minutes. It becomes tacky. Um, in the full 24 hours before it cures completely. Um, another one that I've tried is Gem Tech. Um, it's another one I missed. Infusion, Liquid Fusion. I've also tried that. So I've been around the block. B6000, I've tried that as well. So here is the methods. The scattered method, the honeycomb method, and the grid method. Let me know which one you decide to try and how you like it. And leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you want to see below. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm just going to show you guys some different kind of methods in a second after I feel this in. But yeah, make sure you like this video, subscribe, comment, share, and follow me on Instagram, the Tumblr DR underscore. Follow me on TikTok, the Tumblr DR underscore. And I'll see you next time.